Christ is risen. He is risen we share the Easter greeting this Sunday. It is our last Sunday of the Easter season. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church. So we encourage you to wear red shirts or red dresses. If you have red in your wardrobe, uh, it's the symbol of the Holy Spirit coming upon the original disciples who were sent out to share the good news of Jesus. But we thank you for joining us here. I'm Pastor Steve Talmadge. Pastor Nanette Christofferson isn't here. She, at some time during today, is crossing uh, Dead Woman's Pass in Peru, which leads down to the ancient Inca city of Machu Picchu. That pass is 13,500 feet, so I'm glad I'm not there. I'm with you. <laughs> um, but uh, you can pray for her and her family as... Uh, this is on their bucket list, and uh, she said the hike ends on Tuesday, and God willing, she'll be back sometime Thursday night and be with us next, uh, next Sunday. Uh, we want to uh, uh, celebrate today. We have two faith stepping stones that are being incorporated into this 9 o'clock service. Uh, one of our uh, confirmants is moving, relocating to Minnesota this summer, and so uh, Kira Broyles, uh, Boyles will be uh, confirmed at this service. And then we have two 12th graders. We have a third 12th grader that can't be with us today, but we have two 12th graders who are graduating. Uh, and so we're doing our face stepping stone for gradu graduation. Uh, that's uh, Mason Weatherly and Abby Wahlberg. So uh, uh, we celebrate these milestones in their life. At our uh, earlier service this morning, uh, our, our pianist, Georgia Swing, is uh, needing to retire because of arthritis in her thumbs. It's tough to be a pianist with thumbs not working. Uh, and uh, God provided us with Dr. Nadia Fikin, who uh, it will be joining us on Father's Day, uh, June 18th, as a replacement. So we're grateful for God's provision there. Uh, we encourage you to sign the purple books that are in the row of chairs. We hope you'll greet people you haven't met before. And uh, for those, I know several told us this is their last Sunday until September or October or November. Uh, God bless you as you go to wherever you go. Uh, we know that you'll be missing the best climate of the year here in Arizona, in Phoenix. Uh, we'll be thinking about you as we um, see the temperature in the low 70s most days. <laughs> Gluten-free wafers are available in the middle of the bread tray. Uh, grape juice is in the center of the wine tray. All who are baptized are welcome to the Lord's table. And after today's service, there'll be cake and ice cream celebrating our faith stepping stones. So let's worship God. Let's stand and join in our song of praise. Good morning. So nice to see you here. We're doing a brand new song. And the good news is that you already know the lyrics because it is the Lord's Prayer. So we're going to sing the Lord's Prayer today, and I think we'll be just fine. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my... I told you... Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. This is the next part. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who stand against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but to live. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart, Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them, 
It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, all yours, the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever, the kingdom is yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours. Right here in my heart, Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart, on earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart. All right. Praise the Lord. Very nice. Nice job. He is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty. There is a God who saves, 
one who is strong and mighty. Freedom is in his name. Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we gather in this place to offer our praise to you, to remember that you are a God who wants our praise, who receives our praise, and fills us with that praise. Guide us, O Lord, in this day of worship to you. We give you thanks for the privilege to celebrate faith stepping stones, affirmations of promises that you made and promises that others have made to young people in this congregation. Help us to remember always you are the great promise keeper and your grace is forever. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. I invite any children who are with us to come forward. The rest of you may be seated. Hey. 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 Come on up here. Come on up here. Get. All right. Look, you're never too old to be a kid. Thank you. I was feeling very lonely up here. All right. We'll see if all of our confirmation instruction has worked or not. What am I standing by? The baptismal font. And this is where it all begins in the Christian church. Baptism is a place where people come into the church, come into the body of Christ. And in the Lutheran tradition and other traditions, baptism is the key place where we celebrate and affirm God promising us that we are a child of God, right? Okay. And what do you do, what do, you do to get that promise? Absolutely nothing, okay? It is a given, unearned. God is making this promise. But to believe that promise, to celebrate that promise, we need help. And so God gives you parents and grandparents and sponsors and a congregation. And uh, you might, you're going to hear some of these things in the face stepping stones. And some of you have been through some of this. When parents come and grandparents and others bring a child or an individual gets baptized, but this would be a children, these would be children, we ask, we say, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? And I haven't had anyone say I don't yet, but they say I do, okay? But then we have to go through this long list. As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities. That's a word that we don't like, right? Because when responsibilities are laid out for you, what does that mean? Who's in charge? You are, okay? And, and so these are people who are making commitment to their children, their grandchildren, and what are they? To live with them among God's faithful people. So why are we here right now? Because people have made promises to live among God's faithful people. And then bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Why are we here? Because promises have been made and promises are being lifted out, lived out. And then to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. And you all have learned in the small catechism, Luther gave the basics of what it means to be a Christian and what you should know and what's in that little catechism. You have Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, right? And you all went through that, right? Okay. All right. And why, why did Pastor Nanette and, and Bev and Marguerite and, 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 uh, and, past, and, and, and me teach you these things? Because we've made promises, right? Okay. 
All right, then to nurture them in faith and prayer. And this is a good one because in our gospel reading that you're going to hear in a minute, Jesus is praying for us. He's praying for his disciples. And then you have to ask the big question that you started asking when you were two years old. Do you know what that question is? Why? Why? And most parents just say because, right? But it's not a because. The answer to the why question is so that your children may learn to trust God. Okay? And then proclaim Christ through word and deed, through your life. Through your life. Because what happens in a baptismal service? Besides the water and all that, there's a candle. And what do we usually say around that candle? Let your light so shine before others that they will glorify your Father in heaven, right? Because guess what, Kenny? You're a burning candle. And I'm watching you flicker around me. And I'm seeing, well, look, I, I, see, I see. Do you see God in Kenny? And I see God in each of you. I see the light of the Lord shining in each and every one of you, right? And hopefully in some of these folks out here, you see that candle still flickering, right? And then, uh, and then to care for others. To care for others. Not just the people we like. Really, the call of a Christian is to care for the people we maybe don't like, right? And the world God made. The planet that we're living on. And to work for justice and peace so that people can live with each other rather than tearing each other apart, right? Then the big question is asked to the parents and grandparents and sponsors. You promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life. And what do they usually say? I do, right? Thankfully. But then we look at the sponsors because we all need buddies to help us along the way. We ask them, will they help the parents and grandparents? And they say, I do. And then we look out here to the people here. And they have a job. And that's to support the parents, the grandparents, and the sponsors. And then we lift up what we're promising to, that we don't believe there's any force or power greater than God's love. And so then Luther says, remember your baptism every day. Because that baptism says, guess what, Jackie? You're a child of God, right? No matter what that mirror reflection looks like, no matter what your heart's feeling, no matter what's going on in your head, you are, Samantha, who are you? Katie? Mason? Maddie? Trey? Who's this guy? Logan? <laughs> well, who are you? What are you? Jesse? Kenny? What are these people? All right, let's pray. Repeat, close your eyes, fold your hands, and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for claiming us as your children in baptism, for giving us parents and grandparents, sponsors and godparents, and members of a community of faith that help us to remember we are all children of God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up. All right. Let's stand. Let's listen to the word of God as we sing the acclamation. The gospel is from John, chapter 17, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. 
Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you, you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. If I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you give me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word, word of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. For those watching on live stream, we're shorthanded in the booth today. So if you're having some glitches with the, with the text and the slides, um, just be gracious and kind. Um, because sometimes when you're short staff, you do the best you can. The grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, who continues to pray on our behalf. Amen. Well, this is the season of promotions and graduations and questions around uh, what are you planning to do with your life? Or what are you going to study? Or what do you think you're going to pursue are often raised when you gather with family and friends. For graduating high schools, high school seniors finding an affordable path to higher education or training, which will not incur large debt, seems to be a frequent comment of both those seniors and their parents. Because of record unemployment and multiple opportunities in the field of science, technology, engineering, many are taking jobs or enrolling in programs which will not just lead to a paycheck, but hopefully being able to move out of their parents' home. But they, are, they seem to be pursuing things that interest them and may even help to solve some of the big, big problems this planet is facing. I recently listened to an interview of a young woman who graduated and went into big debt to go to law school, got a law degree, and she got buried in a low staff position just doing document reviews. And she really had believed that she was going to be a world changer, to use her brains, her abilities, her skills to really make a difference. Well, an opportunity was created and she went to work for a big-time law firm. She still was doing document reviews, but she was a part of a team that was handling a major, major case. The firm had been hired by CBS, and the firm had been hired to investigate whether or not their former CEO, Leslie Moonves, who had resigned in 2018, was entitled to a $120 million golden parachute. Or could they just fire him for cause? Because of his misconduct and allegations of sexual harassment. The young female attorney always wanted to use her life to make an impact, make a difference. And she felt this case provided her an opportunity. As she saw in her document reviewing 
Attempts were being made to cover up. Attempts were being made to protect Moonves at the expense of the multiple women he had harmed. She made a professionally costly choice. She became an informant to a New York Times reporter, which resulted in Moonves being fired for cause. CBS not having to pay out $120 million. But her firm did an investigation which led to her resignation and her being punished and put on probation as a lawyer because she had divulged confidential information. Five years later, the reporter who received all of that juicy information and was able to launch her career asked this young lawyer, was it worth it? And she honestly responded, I don't know. I don't know. She said, though big name individuals throughout this Me Too movement have been in prison, they've lost jobs, they've lost money, they've lost reputation, I too suffered a lot personally. And the system still continues. Five years later, they still continue to perpetuate a culture that allows workplaces to use power and control at the expense of treating all people with respect and fairness. She had been driven by idealism of wanting to protect other potential victims, a sense that there's more to life than getting and taking all that you want and You do need to care about others, but life has chastened her. I just finished watching the Netflix documentary on Boston Celtics great Bill Russell, who as a player and a player coach won 11 national basketball championships in his 13-year career, 11 out of 13 years world champion. Nobody can claim that. Bill Russell loved to play basketball, but he did not want his life or his contributions to be limited to what he did with a basketball. As a prominent African-American male in the turmoil of the 1960s civil rights battles and the personal discrimination that he and his family felt moving into a dominant white neighborhood outside of Boston while everyone was happy to cheer for him on the court in Boston Garden, he was always reflective of what is my meaning and purpose with the life that I've been given. He said, we're a bunch of grown men playing a child's game." It's a child's game we made into a man's game by complicating it. Silly, isn't it? We entertain people for X number of hours during the winter. They may talk about it for a few minutes, maybe an hour, then it's forgotten. Is this a contribution? What do we do? What do we do with the life that we have been given? And it is a gift. Where do we direct the time, the energy, the abilities, and resources we all have been given? Sometimes I'm asked what led me to become a pastor. And there have been many factors and many influences which took me on the path to which I'm still walking now over 38 years. But one of the factors which still motivates me is the opportunity to use one's time and talents to share and engage in what lasts forever. Forever. Being a pastor has been a privilege of walking alongside people from birth to death and serving as a link and a messenger of God's forever love for this world, for all humanity, for you and for me. Being a pastor allows me the opportunity to learn from and invite others to know eternal life is a present reality, a present reality. 
And not just something you and I get to enjoy after we die. But this privilege is not just reserved for pastors. Each of us here today has a daily opportunity to remember and live in the timeless reality of God's love. So I ask, when you think of eternal life, what comes to mind? This morning, Jesus gives us the answer. The context of this lesson is part of Jesus' final farewell in John 13 to 17. It's his farewell to his disciples, his closest and most intimate friends, students, colleagues, Though the other gospel writers portray Jesus leaning on a rock in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying to God while the disciples are snoring away, this prayer is set in the same room where Jesus had washed their stinky feet. It's in the same room where he had shared the Passover Seder with them. It's in the same room where Judas got up and left the group to betray Jesus. And now Jesus, being fully transparent and vulnerable, openly prays, knowing what the next three days will play out. Take note, it's around a table where this prayer is being offered. A table that we often call that meal, the Last Supper. In our reading, we hear Jesus first praying for himself, about himself, and then it transitions. It transitions to Jesus praying for his disciples. And it is in this beginning part of the prayer that we, like the disciples, get to hear. Father, the hour has come. It's now is the time. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people. To give eternal life. To give eternal life to all whom you have given. And here's your answer. To the question. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the, one, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. In the past few weeks, six households connected to this congregation have lost a loved one to death. Some expected and some unexpectedly. Some of us have received news of family members or a friend or a neighbor who has died. Questions and thoughts about eternal life generally filter through the air. Too often our minds fixate on eternal life as something beyond rather than experienced here and now. And as we struggle to find peace in understanding and accepting that we are dust and to dust we shall return, as we seek to find meaning and purpose in this life that isn't just lost and forgotten after we die, as we know in our most honest moments the grief and anxiety that these recent days have unveiled, particularly when death touches us, as we desperately search for words of certainty in these uncertain times, Jesus' prayer invites you and me to discover That one thing, the only thing that will truly last forever is the knowledge of the God whom we confess, whom we confess to be the creator of all things in heaven and on earth, and Jesus Christ whom we confess to be the one who reveals the true nature of this God who creates us. What is is eternal life. Eternal life is having a relationship with God. Jesus is not talking about having a passing acquaintance with God, but a living, daily engagement and encounter with God as we live in a loving relationship with ourselves and with others. I invite you to think about the best relationships that you have right now or have had in your life. I want you to think about those relationships and and how how have those relationships become so important to you? What has made them good and healthy relationships? Hasn't it been the investment of time, of energy, 
discovering and learning more and more about each other as you have lived this life? What is the basis of these relationships which bring us mutual joy, comfort, safety, and acceptance? Are not those relationships really just a window, a window to the ultimate relationship all of us might have with God? In our reading for today, Jesus teaches us through his personal prayer with his disciples that eternal life is not white fluffy clouds, harps, winged creatures, golden streets, palatial palaces, and heavenly choirs. Eternal life is not something you or I have to wait for. We don't have to wait to experience only after we die. Eternal life is a here and now possibility experienced by having a living and loving relationship with a God today, right now. Eternal life is living each day in the confidence that you and I are really loved and accepted by God, which was declared when we were created in our mother's womb in the image of God was declared again when we are gathered at a font and the waters of baptism washed over us and the promise of God was pronounced over us. And when we share a little bread and a little wine. This love is most fully reflected through the cross of Jesus. Eternal life is hopefully sensed and experienced as we live in imperfect relationships, which all of our relationships are. But those relationships are nurtured and they're strengthened by acts and words of forgiveness and a commitment to work to build each other up rather than tear one another down. Eternal life is a here and now reality. When you and I can arise each day knowing knowing that today is a gift that I did not earn or create for myself but am given so I may reflect God's love for me by the way that I dare to love my neighbor or receive the love of my neighbor. Eternal life is experienced today and hopefully tomorrow as you and I hold tight to what this Easter season has all been about where we have boldly declared Death cannot and will not stop God's love for the world. And it cannot and will not stop God's love for you or me. Amen. At this time, we are going to move into the faith stepping stones. So, Kira, will you come up with your family? You can pick a pick a pick a kneeler of your choosing. Who make desires to make public affirmation of her baptism. Let's hear a reading from the Gospel of Mark. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he said to them, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for Kira, whom you made your own by water and the word. You have called her to yourself, enlightened her with the gifts of your Holy Spirit, and nourished her in the community of faith. 
uphold your friends and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth in the promise of baptism. We ask this in the name of Christ our, bro our, Christ our brother. Amen. Kira, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject the sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, reply, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, I renounce them. Congregation, please join as we respond to the next few questions with the profession of our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Kira, you have made public profession of your faith with this community of faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support this sister and pray for her in their life in Christ? If so, reply, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Family, will you lay your hands on Kira? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. We listen to Kira's verse. Kira's verse is Psalms 124, verse 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Stir up and cure the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand, Kira, turn and face the congregation. Let us rejoice with the sister in Christ as she steps forward in faith. All right, you can go back to your seats. Now we invite Abby and Mason and their family to come forward. Today we celebrate those who are taking another step in their faith through the faith stepping stone of our graduation. We are reminded of the reading in Mark 12 we heard in Kira's confirmation where Jesus answers the question of which commandment is the greatest. And we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. And we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. Parents and Christian love, you presented your children for holy baptism. In their baptism, sacred promises were made. As parents of Abby and Mason, it was part of your calling to see that those secret, sacred promises were kept, to faithfully bring them to the services of God's house, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and to provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. Parents, you have fulfilled those promises. We now ask you to covenant with this congregation for the ongoing support of Abby and Mason's faith journeys. Do you intend to routinely lift 
Abby and Mason up in prayer? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Congregation, do you promise to support and encourage these parents in the keeping of these sacred promises? If so, answer, we will with God's help. We will with God's help. Abby and Mason, do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear God's word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed to serve all people, following the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I invite Abby Mason to kneel. Parents, I invite you to place your hands and other family members. Repeat the blessing. We come this day before God to bless you. And thank the Creator for the gift you've been to us. You have given our lives a deeper meaning and a deeper calling. Through you, we have come to understand the nature of God's love, of joy, of forgiveness. We thank God today for the gift that you have been in our lives. Wherever you go, you will always be a part of us. Wherever you go, our love goes with you. Whatever you do, you will always be a part of our hearts. We bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay, at this time, uh, Mason and Abby stand up. And uh, parents, you get to, well, we don't have enough kneeling here. So let's stand. Have them stand in front of you. Parents, stand right in front of the graduate. And place your hands, graduates, on their shoulders. And repeat after me. Uh, look at each other. Don't look at the congregation. This is a very... <laughs> This is a blessing you're pronouncing on them. Okay, so uh, Mr. Weatherly, you want to turn around and look at your son? Okay. <laughs> All right, I know this can get a little, a little emotional. I remember doing this to my children. Um, and they're old now. Repeat after me, Abby and Mason. You have given of your heart and of your home. You have loved and cared for me, even when it was difficult. I bless you this day for the sacrifice you made to give me life. I thank God this day for the power and selflessness of your love. Wherever I go, you will always be a part of me. Wherever I go, your love and example will continue to bless me. Whatever I do, I will always be your child. And I thank God for blessing my life with you. I bless you in Jesus' name. The Lord bless these households. The Lord bless both of these households and graduates as God goes before you and all around you and within you. Amen. Let us honor these parents who have kept the promises made to their graduates that they made to their graduates when they were baptized. Let's give them a round of applause. You may return to your seats. Congregation is invited to stand as we join in song. Celebrate what a beautiful name, the name of Jesus.
You were the word at the beginning One with God the Lord most high Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. The veil torn before you, you silenced the voice of sin and shame. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no Nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. You may be seated. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the church, this congregation, and the mission of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ crucified and risen, may God continue to lead us in integrity and truth. We pray, Lord, hear us in your mercy. For the unity of the church, that we might be one, we pray, Lord, hear us in your mercy. For those who lead our local communities, our country, and our world, May God strengthen them with wisdom and fortitude, we pray. Lord, hear us in your mercy. For all who suffer from despair, may God grant them abundant hope, we pray. Lord, hear us in your mercy. For all graduates and transitions happening within households as 
children move away and, and, uh, and families readjust. Lord, we pray. Lord, hear us in your mercy. For the faithful gathered here, may God inspire our lives to reflect the glory of God's unconditional love, the path of forgiveness, and the gift of eternal life in the here and now. We pray. Lord, hear us in your mercy. For the sick who are on our hearts and minds right now, From within our community, we lift up Ken, Larry, Dan, Kim, Rod, Kirk, Sarah, and Barbara. We pray, Lord, hear us in your mercy. For all who have passed away, we name today Joe Holmwood and Michael Miller. May God shine God's eternal light upon them while comforting all who mourn. We pray, Lord, Hear us in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks to his father, and then he broke it. Then he gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and he offered it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant on my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word praying from the endless glory to a cradle in the dirt coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died
conquer death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father of Restored Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Let's rise for the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Yeah.
Share the good news and share some cake and ice cream. song. 